So Every Day, which is based on a novel by David Levithan and uh, from the director of The Vow. Now, I have to say, I saw this without having seen any trailers for it. And so, have, do, you, do you know about this film? No, I'm waiting to be told. Okay, no, fine. So you haven't sort of seen no, trailers? Okay, so, no, um, So I went in completely cold. So what happens is a character wakes up, a young man wakes up, looks at, looks at themselves, looks at their surroundings, goes to school, apparently uncertain who they are. They meet somebody who appears to be their girlfriend, but they don't seem to recognise them. She says, would you like to hang out and go and do something? And he says, is that the kind of thing that we do? And she says, it's the, yes, yeah, the kind of thing we could do. They then go off and they have a really, really lovely day together. But you have the sense that, that one of these characters appears to not entirely know who they are or where they are or the parameters of the circumstances that they're in. They have a really, really lovely day. And at the end of the day, the character says, you do know that this won't be the same tomorrow because every day this character changes. And every day this character reappears as a different character, as a different person. And the story then essentially becomes a story of a young woman who realises that she is falling for somebody who changes every day, in every way. You know, every day, in every way, they are a different person. Here's a clip. Seriously, why are you doing this? The day we met, I felt something I've never felt before. And I don't want to let that go. About that day, how, how is it okay, what you did? I let you kiss me because I thought you were Justin. I, I told you something incredibly personal because I thought you were Justin. You never would have understood. I was in his mind, Rhiannon. I know him. Are you serious? I know him better than you do. He is my boyfriend. You know you shouldn't be with him. Oh, who should I be with then? You? I mean, off the top of my head, that's an option. This isn't funny, A. This is so weird. I mean, today you're... Not everyone's body aligns with their mind, but... I'm not asking you to give Vic a chance, Rhiannon. I'm asking you to give me a chance. I love that clip because in a way it kind of, um, it, it does perfectly encapsulate the film. And I was first watching it, it, I was trying to get my head around the idea because I didn't know, you know, exactly what the idea was. And I was thinking, I, I, I'm trying to get a, a grasp on this. And very early on, they start raising things like uh, some character talks about demonic possession. I was reminded of uh, one of those themes of uh, John Wyndham's Chockey, which is a sort of old science fiction novel for you know, what was now we refer to as YA uh, audiences. It was a novel I really, really loved. The thing I really liked about this was, firstly, it's, it's really well played. I mean, it... it it works. It sounds like it shouldn't work, and yet it does. And it does for a number of reasons. Firstly, because I think Angari Rice is terrific uh, in the central role and makes you believe in this. You know, you if whenever you have a movie which has got a kind of um, s vaguely supernatural conceit, how much you believe in it is often to do with the reaction of the person who is seeing it, and it's to do with whether, whether they believe in it. This is what I always refer to as the Jeff Goldblum shot. You know the moment in Independence Day when Jeff Goldblum looks up and he sees the spaceship? And it's not the spaceship, it's the look on Jeff Goldblum's face mm. that says the spaceship is really there. And so it's, it's all to do with whether or not you believe a character's reaction to being faced with a situation which is completely absurd and which they apparently can't believe, and yet they come to accept it. So that's the first thing. The second thing is... It had a really sort of lovely, subversive, uh, magical quality, in the, which made me think of, on the one hand, that wonderful anime, Your Name, which is a body swap movie in which you have these two characters who are separated uh, by huge distances and by gender, and they have this, and also by time, and they end up inhabiting each other's bodies, and people re refer to it as Freaky Friday. But if you think more of a film like Girls Lost, which is that, Swedish drama, which again is a sort of, you know, it's, it's about transcending gender boundaries. And so essentially the, the, the central story is that, you know, that people are not defined by those external characteristics of, you know, gender, race, appearance, whatever it is, that there is, there is an essence of a character which is referred to here as A. And so on the one hand, it's, it's a teen love story that is played, I thought, rather sensitively and rather well, and it's, you know, it's funny and charming and on the other hand, it's got, I think, a, a, a really sort of positive message. It's a, it's a film which is very, very, you know, inclusive. And it's trying to sort of, it's talking about a, a quite complicated issue, but talking about it in a way which works because it's, it's encapsulated in a metaphor that kind of makes sense within the, the body of the film itself. 
And it is true that you could, I suppose, watch it and, and go, oh, hang on, this is ridiculous. But it's in the same way that you could look at science fiction and go, oh, this is ridiculous. For me, what I really liked about it was that I thought, okay, fine, I get that, I understand that, and this is really, and I'm completely with her, and I'm following her through the way in which this drama is working, and it's all making sense, and it's all moving towards something which which is a kind of an irreconcilable uh, dilemma, and I thought it handled that really, really nicely. So it's very progressive portrait of the sort of polymorphous potential of love whilst also being a sort of a charming and weirdly subversive teen romance that's playful and I was I was really sort of won over by it and I, I went in with, with knowing almost nothing about it at all and in the first five minutes I was slightly baffled and then the film did exactly the thing that a film is meant to do it explained itself to me it brought me in and I was saying before you know about watching that film you know with these two characters in which I never thought I'm watching those two characters what I thought is I'm watching two people I admire playing these characters and yet with this, which has got a, you know, a much greater leap of faith is involved in, in accepting the, the, the premise, I did. I accepted the premise. I accepted who the people were. I understood the thing made complete emotional sense. And I went with it and really enjoyed it.